Hello and welcome to the YouTube upload of the Jason Grimshaw character profile. The original profile here was taken from episode 17 of the podcast, released way back in, I think, November of 2012. So a jolly long time ago. And I thought that because everything that's going on with the, uh, with the hunt for Todd at the moment, it seemed like the perfect time to not forget his dear brother. Yeah, don't forget Jason. <laughs> no, Eileen's off visiting Jason at the moment, isn't she? I assume. I mean, she's where over in, Th in Thailand, oh, okay. his, his new place of abode, um, which is where he's been for a fair few years now. Uh, little did we know when we recorded this podcast that he only had a few years left. Although, <laughs> interestingly, we did have something to say about whether we thought we'd want him to leave or not, um, as we were getting towards the end of the, uh, the, the profile. So... Uh, look out, look for, out that. for that indeed Sorry. um we're going to play the podcast now with the, the extract from the podcast come back at the end because we've got another few years of jason's um Love life to up with yes exactly yeah. you, you say it so succinctly Gemma. i know brilliant shall we just do the here's the jason grimshaw podcast everybody Character profile time, it's Jason Grimshaw. Yes, um, Jason's been quite a major character this week, so we thought we'd give him a go. Um, he's played by Ryan Thomas. Um, Jason was born on the 27th of June, 1983. That's five days before I was born. Aww. <laughs> Do we seem about the same age? He looks, he looks younger than you, even though oh, he seems more say mature. That. I just insulted you double, double insult there, thanks. <laughs> um, his dad is Tony Stewart, who was in it for a little bit uh, back in... <clears throat> 10 years or so ago, uh, Mum Eileen, obviously. Um, his brother was Todd Brimshaw, Grimshaw. Still is. Half-brother. Yeah, half-brother. In 2007, he had an ill-fated marriage to Sarah Louise Platt. Um, Jason first appeared on 25th of December in 2000. Oh. So, nice Christmas surprise there. Um, and he's been around um, 1,150 episodes. Um, I remember when Jason and Todd first came into the programme, Eileen had been in it for I don't know nine months or so she was just working on the street on the switchboard at streetcars um, and uh, I think lots of fans liked the sort of the relationship that she had with Steve kind of constantly insulting each other I think so <laughs> the writers had her move. banter there there was uh, and, the, and the writers had to move into the street which I was very happy to have um, and then like I said at the end of 2000 um, Jason turned up and I, I think it was early next year that uh, Todd first arrived when the producers cast Ryan and Bruno as the parts, it was in the hope of earning the kind of uh, the heartthrob kind of status that Adam Rickett had. They wanted. Uh, oh, bit... Adam Rickett. Yeah. I met Adam Rickett once. I didn't like him. Carry on. <laughs> they wanted. They, uh, they they wanted sort of teenage girls to fancy them. Well, maybe that has that worked. I don't know. I don't know. You're not. not they're only teenage, teenage girls. girls. <laughs> Do you like Jason Grimshaw? No. The, the, the young, him. mature Jason Grimshaw, he seems perfect for you. I don't like his surname. <laughs> um, okay, so storyline wise. Yeah, so he arrived in 2000 yeah. with his half brother Todd to move in. Yeah, um, and then 2001, um, and I think this was just before you started watching it, I think it was the Easter before you started watching it, that was when uh, Toya Battersby was raped and um, that was quite a hard-hitting Easter storyline. I remember there were lots of complaints about showing that as the Easter entertainment. But, yeah, um, you can't imagine sitting around eating your nice roast lamb and having munching on Easter eggs and then sitting around the telly to watch Corrie with your nan. Yeah, and uh, well anyway, Jason <clears throat> Um, was not the rapist, but he was suspected of it because he was the one that um, that he found, found her, Toya. Yeah. yeah. Two thousand and two. He slept with Todd's girlfriend, Candice. Do you remember Candice? I remember Candice because she had a funny nose. Which <laughs> she's got a weird nose like Sandra Bullock. <laughs> I think Candice was another another one brought in to kind of. I set quite liked the her. Show. Yeah, she was uh, a bolshy kind of like Tina esque sort of character. Yeah, absolutely. She and she was a bit thick as well, a bit like Rosie turned out to be. Yeah. Um, but anyway, she, because Candice has been going out with uh, Todd, that led to a big fallout between Jason and Todd, one of many brotherly spats that they had. Candice should have known better. Yeah. What, the fact that Todd was gay? Or... No. <laughs> um, in 2003, that's when um, Tony arrived, who was Jason's dad. Um, and he was this uh, sort of scouser, kind of rough-looking bloke. Um, and I, I don't remember much about the history between him and Eileen, but basically he came, he came to... Coronation Street to try and scrounge some money off of Jason. Um, in the end, Jason 
caught him stealing some money from street cabs um, and shopped street him. Street cars, street cars. Street cars, yeah. And he uh, shopped him to the police. <laughs> um, and then that was the end of that. So he, he wasn't in a very long pony. In 2004, he started another relationship, one of many. This was with uh, Violet, who was one of the girls that worked at the pub. Violet's the one that's friends with Sean. Yes, the one. Kind of baby with him. Yeah, the one who's has kidnapped the baby yes. in London. And Marcus's friend Violet. I'm proud because I know what, who she is, and it's <laughs> 2004. Yeah, that was that was a that was the year when it all come, came out about Todd being gay as well after he uh, kissed Adam Rickett. No, he kissed Nick. <laughs> it was Adam Rickett. Adam Rickett. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Jason Jay- wasn't too happy about this idea. He's a bit of an old-fashioned. Man's man, isn't he, Jason? Yeah, well, I, I, l- looking at the uh, the Corypedia and Wikipedia, both of it for Jason's personality say um, homophobic as kind of a a major thing about his personality. Really? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that, especially I not would now. I call him grudgingly tolerant. Yeah, I mean, back back when it first came out that Todd was gay, Jason definitely was, and he was very kind of cavemanish about it. I watched um, on YouTube last night the the fight between Eileen and Gail which was when um, it was all t- found out that Todd was gay and he he had been seeing Sarah Lou at the time and then um, Jason comes along, leading to the uh, the classic line of uh, the rest of the village people are hoving. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and Gail was saying, oh, Todd's gay, Todd's gay, and Jason didn't believe it. And he was like, oh, yeah, right, Gail, whatever. And then Todd said, I am. And like the look on Jason's face of kind of utter disgust and then he... He walked off. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah, so um, that was kind of a, quite a low it's only point because for Jason. He was, he was shocked about it, surely. Yeah, yeah, but I'll I, give him the benefit of the doubt there. I, I think in the following years, I mean, a lot of because of Sean being in it and, and living with the Grimshaws, he's definitely come round to the. Well, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, he's been living with a gay man in his house yeah. his whole life, yeah. apparently. And he was also voted oh, no, Mr. Gay UK back in um a couple of years ago in a comedic turn of events. <laughs> um, in 2005, Jason dumped Violet after finding that she'd kissed Charlie Stubbs, who was his boss at the time, Charlie of course. Charlie Stubbs, God's sake. I know, now he was uh, definitely a sort of Woman. finger in many pies, as oh it were. Oh my God. <laughs> um, and, uh, this was, and then he started to romance another of Todd's um, ex-flames, uh, Sarah Louise. Um, yeah, but he couldn't make up his mind between Sarah and Violet no, in 2006. No, but he, so he proposed to, to Sarah when he was faced with losing her. He was like, Sarah said, well, um, I, you got to make your mind up, but I, I'm not staying around forever. So he decided to propose to her, but then he chickened out when they came to the wedding day and escaped out of the toilet window. <laughs> it's quite, it must have been quite young then. Oh, yeah, 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 it must have been. He was, he was my age back at the time. Yeah, how old was that? <laughs> when was it? 2007? I don't know. 2006. Uh, Six years ago. Yeah. I was 23. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, Christmas so, 2006, there was a special delivery that was uh, yeah. given to the wrong person. Yeah, so Jason came in on a Christmas storyline and then in 2006 his big surprise was that um, a girl turned up at his uh, front door, I- Eileen answered, and there was a little baby there that was supposed to be Jason's. Yeah. Um, and the, like, the mum was like, I can't I can't deal with her, you, you take her, this is your son's. Um, and then so throughout the first few months of 2007, uh, Jason was, had Eileen and the others kind of rallied around to look after this baby who they named Holly because it's like Aww, a Christmas name. She called it Jesus. But it's a girl. It could be a girl's name. Um, yeah, well, the mum returns in April saying, ah, oh, uh, my yeah. mistake. Yeah, now this was after Charlie Stubbs had been murdered, so his name and picture was... Um, all in the papers yeah, yeah. and she was like I recognise that bloke I thought that was Jason Grimshaw so it turned out the babies were with Charlie's and then uh, Jason had to come to the heartbreaking um, well there wasn't even a decision but he had to he had to give Holly back Um, I think that was quite a turning point to the character because up until then he had been very caveman-ish uh, very kind of a bit happy go lucky almost yeah uh, and, carefree and, and yeah and then this forced him to have to grow up and he found it difficult it's a bit like well who wouldn't yeah yeah exactly it's a bit like we're seeing with uh, I guess David at the moment when he's having to look after all these yeah, but children da- David's taken to it like a duck to water yeah that's true but Jason found it a bit more difficult 
Um, but yeah, he has <laughs> not been mentioned since because I guess it's nothing to do with him anymore. No. Um, later on that year, um, Sarah Louise agreed to marry him again, so <laughs> she's quite forgiving it seems. Um, but David attempted to sabotage the wedding. That was when David was going through his very, very evil phase. It's hard to believe now. But I remember when I hated David. Yeah, he was he was, he was a, a real money. sort of demon child. Yeah. Um, he tried to kill Jason, or at least very seriously maim him by loosening some <laughs> scaffolding that he was on. Jason ended up falling off and was getting married in crutches. And also on the day of the wedding, uh, David drove into the canal to try and reenact that famous Richard Hillman scene. Um, he, said, he said he was trying to kill himself, but then later admitted oh, yeah. that it was actually just... Um, or just a joke. Yeah, just a joke. <laughs> um, and then... That dress burning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. David also burnt um, Sarah's wedding dress, or he had it burnt. He dressed it up as a, as a guy because this was all around bonfire night that this oh, was I happening. That as well. Yeah, it's all coming back to yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> so um, it turns but, out. Yeah, well, Sarah Louise um, was outraged by, by David's behaviour and well, then find be. ways of getting back at him. And, yeah. and one of those included getting some drugs and planting it on David. Um, and then this was a few months, I think, after David had nearly killed baby Bethany um, by putting some drugs that he was had lent to him from Daryl inside a, a teddy bear or something so that the, this yeah the, he was so very David, easily yeah. believed that, that, that they were David's uh, and Jason was little, Jason was horrified yeah he he didn't like the what he was seeing of his new wife really um, and then she decided um, to go to move to Italy where um, uncle her uncle Stephen was Did offered she go a job to Milan or something yeah yeah that's right uh, and, and Jason pulled out at the last minute and said, no, I, I'm, not going. I'm not going with you, I'm staying here. You're not the girl I thought you were, basically. Um, but don't worry, he's, uh, he didn't stay single, single. for long. Uh, in 2008, he slept with Becky, uh, and then they were sort of going out throughout that year until October, um, when he heard that Sarah wanted him back. She, I don't think she was in it. I think it was just over the phone. She was saying, oh, oh look, let's get back together. So he dropped drop Becky just like that and then, then Sarah changed her mind in the end so he was left on his own again in 2009 the divorce proceedings began um, he was back with Becky then he proposed to her but he lost out to Steve and I think we can both or do, would you say that Steve and Becky were better suited than Becky and Jason I don't know my Becky's too good for anyone <laughs> apart from that the one uh, she ended up yeah, with in the end yeah <laughs> Yeah, um, he then began an. <laughs> How many relationships has he had here? What? A... That's the trouble with being the hunk or the stud, isn't it? You get partnered off. Yeah, that's you true. You have that trouble, don't you? Mm, uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so he began a relationship with Tina, and then that led to a big scrap with David because that was obviously one of David's exes. Um, Tina started a property development business with Jason. That wasn't <laughs> that wasn't an exciting. Uh, that was point, just lots of moaning with cans of paint. Yeah, that was a bit dull. Um, and then that was the year that he was made Mr. Gay Weatherfield as well, when he went to a club and he got a bit drunk <laughs> with her, with Sean and probably Marcus. In 2010, he split up with Tina um, because that was after uh, Tina's dad Joe had died and she became that uh, yeah, recluse. Yeah, reclusive, yeah. And, and Graham had been kind of sneaking in to, to see her and look after her and, and a little was, relationship yeah. happened there. Yeah, you can't blame, yeah. That yeah. was sweet. No, that was sweet. You go, Graham was, Graham was lovely. Um, and so basically Jason teamed up with um, David to publicly humiliate Graham and Tina like throwing their clothes out of the windows and uh. kind of that usual kind of thing later on that year he started dating probably the person who I think was best suited to yeah, him <laughs> Rosie yeah. Webster they were a, a really good couple because for the they first hilarious. for the first time Jason was the intelligent one in the partnership because yeah. up until now Jason had been like the the dense one the one who's the kind of the butt of the jokes really but Rosie took that to a new level really yeah absolutely um they, they started dating because he was he drove her to a, a modeling shoot once um and there was supposed to be this other male model um but he he didn't turn up and um Rosie Coerced. Demanded that he join in. <laughs> Jason, and... Jason, he join in. Yeah, yeah, so he got his kit off and he actually quite enjoyed that. And then they, they ended up um, having an intimate moment in the van, if I remember rightly. Oh, God. Um, and December then, 2010, yeah, rescued that, Simon. Yeah, that was at the tram crash um, when it uh, number 13 was on fire and Jason was very brave and went up there and rescued him. Um, and then last year he split up with Rosie after she got a part on a show in London where she had to be single, so he was left on his own again. Oh, I'm a celebrity. 
<laughs> yeah, maybe. It's very pro prophetic in a way, I guess. And in uh, this year, he rekindled his relationship with Maria. Yeah. We know how that turns out. Not, yeah. So, but now he's sort of turned a new corner almost in his yeah. life, trying to make something of his career, really. Yeah, which is good, because we, I, I don't like <laughs> Owen at all. I don't think we're supposed to like Owen. He's a nasty no. piece of work, really. And it's, it'd be good to see Jason kind of, I'd like him to be the the, the main builder of the street. He, he's not, I don't think he's clever enough to, to do this with his own business. But I'd like oh, to no. see them do something with his character because, as we've seen, most of his storylines have related around who's he sleeping with and yeah. then splitting up with. And there hasn't, for me, been a big, memorable Jason storyline. No, not really. There's just been these like little things like the baby and, uh, and, and I guess this what's happening at the moment with the building work. Um, it, I'd quite like to see him kind of paired off with someone for good time to settle down and get married even though he's not the, the settling down type but I mean or is he because I mean he he is very very commitment phobic I think we can agree he doesn't he doesn't like to settle down I mean the fact that he ran off from the relationship yeah, the wedding, the wedding yeah. from Sarah kind of proved that um, but he has matured over the years he's not the kind of the total carefree um, Kind of, fly. Yeah, uh, that he once was, and to be honest, he's—I think—he's a bit of a mummy's boy. Yeah, I mean, well, he's—he's yeah. he's nearly thirty, um, and he's still living at home with his mum. Well, like, everyone it's... lives with Eileen. <laughs> yeah, that's she's true. Got she's got a bit of a... where she puts them all. <laughs> um, and I think if he found somebody a bit like his mum, they could—I don't know. Let's just reflect on the type of women Jason has been with. And, and compare them to Eileen. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're the right person for him. I know, but he's certainly not attracted to that type of woman. Maybe he should branch out. Maybe Julie's the perfect woman for him. Oh, I think Brian would have something to say about that. Yeah. And and, and, and no, Julie's is half sister or something, isn't it? It's she? half aunt. Half aunt, yeah. I think they've had enough incest storylines with that awful uh, Danny, not Danny Baldwin, Jamie oh, Baldwin one a few years ago. I don't yeah, think let's not go let's there. Not go there. Um, so, uh, to be honest, I, I wouldn't be that upset if Jason left. He's been in it a long time, and I, I don't dislike him. He's just a bit deadwood, really. Part of the furniture. Yeah, I, I like the Grimshaw family, because yeah, I, I like Eileen. Yeah, I like Eileen. Um, but I, I don't think the, the, the world would stop turning if Jason left, they, no. unless they do something with him. <laughs> but um, I, I am interested to see where this business venture goes, and if they make a, a thing of that, and... I'd, be, I'd love it if like he took over the builder's yard and sort of Owen well, buys yeah, just desserts. Well, yeah, there's only room for one. Yes, this street ain't big enough one. for the both of us. Yeah. For t both of us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the only time they have two businesses that are the same on the street, they have to write in a rivalry storyline, yeah. and then one of them goes down the pan. Yeah, yeah. So. so, there we go. That is Jason Grimshaw. There we go, Jason. Yeah. So, made a few um, predictions there, Gemma. One... He should find somebody like his mum. Well, who's the next woman to come along in Jason's life after this? But Stella, uh, what was her even name? Price. Stella Price. I how how could I forget? And I'm you so know, sorry. If I were to compare two women on Coronation Street and say that they were like carbon copies of one another, and there really is no point in having both of them on the show at the same time, it'd definitely <laughs> be Eileen Grimshaw and Stella Price. I'm not saying that Stella and Eileen are exactly the same person, but I mean, he's, he was going for an older woman, wasn't he? He was indeed, yes. Yeah. I also wanted to point out, just before we take a look over some of the other things that Jason's been, well, had been doing since, that um, I, I was feeling a bit bad that I left the profile saying, oh, don't think much of him, dead word, wouldn't really care if he left. I think we often are brutally honest at the end of a of a character profile as if we think it's our job to decide whether or not we're going to keep the actors on. Yeah, we're like there with the at the Roman uh, Roman Forum with the thumbs up or down. We yeah. gave him a proper thumbs down there. Um, but we didn't give him a thumbs down, we just said, you know... <laughs> give him something to do. If he wasn't in it. So has it? Um, yeah, no. <laughs> I agree to some extent, although it'd be interesting to see how he would have reacted to, or how he would have been involved in some of the other stories. I mean, um, he ends up seeing Eva uh, years after the, this was recorded, and then obviously with her will be mixed up with Aidan and, and Adam, and I'd have loved to have seen what um, what use they would have put Jason to in that storyline. And, and I do think now I miss him. 
I'd, I'd like to have Jason back. There's not. There isn't doesn't... anybody like him on the show because he is a total himbo. Mm. Um, and the nearest we've got is probably Kirk, but but Jason was always a proper like laddie bimbo. Who, yeah, well, it was the beefcake, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, like he had no not a thought between his ears, but relied on his good looks and it, you know it was it was a nice bloke. He he was that that's the yeah. thing about him on the on the surface. Yeah, he was he was like I said a bit of a bimbo, but he was he was really decent yeah, chap. Was, yeah. I think a proper kind of salt of the earth. You know, yeah, not not too complicated, but yeah, that's right. somebody yeah, that you could, could never accuse that you could pretty much rely on and trust, and and he had your back, and he was he was loyal. I think. Yes, and, I think that's a very good quality. Um, and, and you know, what, there's no there's nobody quite like that at the moment, and and Eileen, I feel, has been cast adrift somewhat over the last few years since since Phelan. Phelan left. She's basically been it's like she fell off the side of a cliff as well. Yeah. So having Jason in it might give us something more to do. And obviously with this t- whole Todd malarkey that's going on at the moment, I'd be fascinated to to see to see how he would be incorporated back into that. I do miss him, but I wouldn't want him to come back and not have anything to do. So bring him back with a purpose and not just bring him back for the sake of, uh, look, it's Jason again, everybody. You like Jason, don't you? So let's have a look at um, what some of the things are that we didn't uh, get a chance to say in that character profile because they haven't happened yet. <laughs> yes, we so he started a relationship with Stella. That was weird. Yeah, that was weird. It, if I remember rightly, it came about when he tried to fix her plumbing or something. Was was it at the time that the there <laughs> I was think a hole? Somebody in the... got their scripts mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't there? Wasn't there a hole in the Rovers' lounge? ceiling and some water came down and he was in charge of fixing that or something (laughs) and you know one thing led to another but i think i thought that was weird at the time and looking back on it it it, it kind of was it was but the age difference i suppose yeah um but um well also they were so different too because stella was so reserved and i mean I i hate to say dull but she was and jason for all that he is not very uh, intellectual kind of a guy certainly still had a spark and you know a bit of joie de vivre about him yeah I mean she she, she really... wanted to, to him to bring his spark into her life I suppose who knew that black holes were beige <laughs> but anyway she got she started to get back with Carl yeah yeah it didn't didn't last too long I think thankfully no. but, but Jason was still mixed up with that story because Carl this was about the time that Carl set fire to the rovers and Jason was involved partly in bringing him down. I think um, he, he suspected it was him. And I think it was him and Dev teamed up, was it, to uh, to figure out who was behind the Rover's fire and Sunita's death? I don't know. <laughs> I think that's right. <laughs> There's quite why. a lot of unlikely partnerships f- formed to get to the bottom of awful things happening on the street. Like, like um, at the moment with, with Imran and Adam... Mm. You know, I, although they work together, they don't ever really strike me as no, the, the, yeah, the sort that would pals. that that would socialise outside of work. Um, so we had, the, the, I suppose, the next twist in Jason's story, which did give you know his character a bit of a kick up a bum, was bringing his dad back, Tony. That was probably I don't remember whether it was two thousand thirteen, two thousand and fourteen. Tony came back into it, played by a different actor, of course, and that seems like a bit of a flash in the pan now, doesn't it? How long was Tony in it for? One year, to two years, three years. I can't, can't really remember. I think, kind of looking back on on him, he didn't make a huge impression of me. He seemed, you know, there to, to, have a plot purpose. But I, I wasn't. Honestly, I don't think I was too disappointed um, when he kicked the bucket at the end. Although oh. I, the fact that he died off screen eventually that was really fair. that was a bit rubbish for the actor. Um, but yeah, the. Uh, Tony ended up um, he ended up giving Jason he, he bought the builders didn't he then he gave it to Jason uh, so he had he was sort of properly in charge of the business which was quite good for him uh, but then there was calamity struck when Tyrone fell through his attic floor yeah. I think which was uh, something that uh, Jason's company had put together and the, and Todd who was back who, uh, who had returned, had returned um, and he was working for Jason at the time, had ordered cheap materials, so it was kind of Todd's fault, really. But, um, yeah, so so Todd and Jason fell out for a bit, and then Jason, and uh, so Todd ended up um, taking his revenge on Jason by making him think that Tony was going out with Eva, 
Having they were having an affair. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because Jason was Jason going out with Eva at this point, which I think yeah. it that that felt to me like that was quite a good pairing. That was a good Jason pairing. Jason and Eva together. E- Eva and Jason. What did and they also talk about of an evening? Eva and Rosie worked so well together because they were both sort of birds of a feather, really. Mm. And sometimes, if you get the wrong personality type, that that can be dire. Mm. Um. But the, but it worked. It worked really well. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they could have they could have worked that long. And I was I think I was a bit gutted when Jason ended up um, going to a uh, well, to Tony and Eva had gone to a house auction. They were going to buy uh, a house for Jason and Eva to have together. And Todd t- had, as I said, had told Jason that Tony and Eva were having an affair. So Jason goes in there full blazing, fists first, asks questions later, punches his dad, and then Eva dumps him. I so think he was just mad that, that, that they were buying a house without asking him anything. Oh, it's sweet. It's and a surprise house. Who wouldn't like one of those? And presumably, if you're purchasing it at auction, it's because it needs a lot of work doing to it. So they're basically going like, here's here's a dump you have to live in. And mm. also, Eva's not going to be doing any DIY around the house, is she? No, she wouldn't want to chip a nail. No. I think t- Tony had been having an affair with Liz, hadn't they? I think that I was... I they were uh... dating. Oh, no, sorry. He'd been having an affair with Tracy. At the same time as Liz, hadn't they? Oh. What, a, what a scallywag. Naughty, what a naughty dirty dog. man. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, so that was kind of, it kind of, that was yeah, the beginning of the end. France yeah. With, um... she, she goes off to France and she comes back and then now she's back in France again. It's weird that, she, that, <laughs> that Jason dated Eva and, and Stella. I don't think I'd fancy dating someone my mum used to. No, no. Um, so anyway, uh, we spoke about Jason's loyalty earlier and he proved it by standing up for Sarah when times were tough between her and uh, drug dealer Callum and then he ended up taking a beating. Yeah, he got beaten up down the He got proper the beaten up down the ginnel. I think by the, some heavies. Yes. I was, yeah, it was Callum and heavies, wasn't it? Yeah. I, think, I think Tony helped save him from that, actually. But then Tony dies. To- Tony dies. Um, Jason ends up going out with Gemma when Eva comes back from France and um, is rejected by her. So I think um, that was a probably a mistake for Jason. Hmm. I think Je- I think Gemma probably is the, uh, the one winner. of her crowning achievements, though probably, I'd have to say. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, and then after Callum's body is dug up because this was after you know the live episode and everything, Jason is is initially a suspect for that. Um, so Phelan says, "Look, you need to better lie low, go to Thailand, so this all blows over." So Jason. Um, goes in scarpers and and he's basic, never come back. Never come back and feeling just he just wanted to take Jason's business. He just wanted him out of the picture, and so he could continue his nefarious deeds. Um, married to Eileen. So do you think that once we get this Callum stuff out in the open once and for all, and if Sarah finally confesses to Adam what happened to Callum, then Jason can come back from Thailand. Yeah, maybe. The fact <laughs> the fact that they're still circling around this plug hole of the Callum murder <laughs> and who done it and who knows who done it and who didn't well, do it. The thing is Jason's yeah, Tony's name's gonna be cleared. Tony was the one who has had it pinned on him mm. this whole time that it was him that murdered Callum. Yeah, and there's so, only a small handful of people who knew who know the truth and it was Kat Kylie. I would actually it. really love Jason to come back and confront Sarah and David about having the secret this whole time and making mm. his dad like he's he, you know he could say um you've made me think my dad's a murderer all these years and all this stuff it'd be quite quite a good way to have him return yeah yeah I, I, I would I'd, I'd quite like him back even better if Eva comes back with him but that'd be fantastic I think, that, uh, I think the I cat's think... got other things going on at the moment <laughs> Yeah. So uh, maybe a while before we see her again. But yeah, that that was the end of Jason. And his uh, departure was announced about three years after we did that last character profile in October 2015. And it does, it, I think it was, it feels, sounds like it was his choice to leave. His his quote was, it's been a great privilege to be in Coronation Street for the past 15 years. That is quite a long time, isn't it? The cast and crew, yeah, he didn't say that. The cast and crew are among <laughs> the best in the business and have had the chance, to have had the chance to be a part of it for so long has been an amazing experience. The decision to leave was an extremely difficult one, but I felt that now was the right time to spread my wings and try other roles. I'm just excited to see now what the exit storyline the writers give Jason is. And, Quite um, annoyingly, he ended up with an episode count of 1,499. So I if think... anything, he just needs to come back for one episode to make it a round number. That, that... I don't know, I think that's quite a cool number. It sounds like a price. 
I don't know. I'd, oh, yeah, 40 no, 99. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know whether if, if I had that on my CV, I'd be just like, oh, just that would that'd irk me. Yeah, it is a bit irksome, isn't it? <laughs> Since um, then, he's done a bit of panto, hasn't he? Yeah, he's he in Neighbours for two months, which is really interesting. Yeah, yeah I, can't, I don't know much. I think there's a play, play a character called Raphael or something. Oh, my gosh. That was, that was, yeah, a couple of years ago. But yeah, he hasn't done any other proper TV roles. He he said that he wanted to go, apart from that, he said he wanted to go and spread his wings and try different ones. But apart from... I don't know whether he's been a Buttons or a Prince Charming or something in the panto. He's, that doesn't sound like he's had much luck there, um, unfortunately. So maybe the, the his path is going to go back to Coronation Street if the producer will have him. But tell you what, I think his biggest um, achievement since leaving Coronation Street in a, in a professional point of view... Maybe, yeah, achievements, but one of the things he was best known for was the, uh, the 2018 Celebrity Big Brother scandal. Yeah, well, that was the final series of Big Brother. So was it? Big I couldn't Brother. remember. Um, yeah, I think it was. And yeah, it must have been. He won it, which is quite good. But, oh, yeah, that's awesome. Um, but ha- probably the reason that he might... Uh, one of the contributing factors to him winning yeah, so it... Yeah, that. ...was the incident with Roxanne Pallet. Did we watch that series? Or did no, we just... we just saw the clips of yeah. people where she basically accused him of punching her. What had he done? Did he just, oh. like, do a little shadow do, box I, with her or something i think he and, did i think he was playing around with her and she and she, yeah and she decided to make it into a dramatic yeah report into big brother say he tried to hit me hit, he hit me and it hurt and um I, I mean i think i think she has since apologized but that was a massive storm in the in the in the big brother world <laughs> it was it was it was <laughs> that, every, that particular summer it was all everyone could talk about for like a week i think and mm. she acted sort of she, I think she left the show and then she had to go on TV and cry and say she was sorry yeah, and everybody hates her we, still. We obviously seen the footage of what happened and I can't remember whether even the people in the Big Brother house were showing the clip of this is what happened because they obviously, a lot of them were turned against um, Ryan because of what it's Roxanne had said. It's difficult to know what to do in that situation. Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm very glad for him. It's his, not like... Um, his name was cleared, yeah. rightly so, and then he went on to win it, which is quite cool to have... I have a Corrie star, an ex Corrie star is the, the final winner of Big Brother in the UK. Celebrity Big Brother. We'll take that. Celebrity Big Brother, yeah. Yeah. And he's also um, in a TV show called Absolutely India, Manx in Mumbai. Yeah, that was earlier this that year, was... wasn't it? That's, that was I, a... Um... I remember seeing it on the telly as... It's a, let's have some lads and get them to go and do laddish things Sounds like my in worst India. Nightmare. We didn't watch that. It's not our sort of TV. I don't like programmes where celebrities get to go somewhere that they can afford to go. <laughs> I find it Never really up. irritating. I wonder how he came across, because really, we didn't really watch him too much in Big Brother. No, if I he's think anything he like really, Jason, I think he's really he's probably done quite a nice, himself. watchable guy. I think people really, really like him. Mm. And the fact that he got to be in the show as well shows that he's... Um, so he's kind of become a personality rather than a celebrity. Yeah, well, he's well, got, no, he's got no, other celebrity brothers, actor. hasn't he? Or at least one celebrity brother, I can't remember. Yeah, um, so he's more known as being a personality than an actor now. So I don't know if he'd want to come back to Corey at no. the moment, but as always... We'll see, we'll as see. As long he's, as there's a grim show well, on the street. He's got, he's got a wedding in the future to deal with, hasn't he? Because he got engaged last year. So um, I'm sure that will be taking Congratulations. up plenty of his time. And um, I wonder whether it was supposed to be a, a this year wedding that's had to be... Well, we don't know because we didn't get invited again. We didn't. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> anyway, good luck with that, Ryan. Yeah, and, good um, luck. And, well, hopefully see you again soon on Coronation Street. Sorry for saying that. I wouldn't mind if you left. Well, he, obviously he agreed with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he just, decided just to took leave a few years later. He probably listened to it originally. Oh. It was just playing on his mind for like three years. You know what? If they don't want me in the show, <laughs> I'm just going to leave. They're going to be like that. And now, now I would perfectly, happily welcome him back with open I arms. really do like Jason. No and I'll tell you another thing that would be quite fun. Because he was younger, obviously. <laughs> When he was in it. So how long has it been since he left? He's, he's our age. He's, yeah, I know he is. It's what, it, um, he that's le- what I'm leading to. He, he left four years ago. What is an older Jason going to be like? Because his personality was very much like young and free and like sleeping around and um, you, very youthful personality. How do you marry that to ageing? And getting and wanting to settle well, down. You know, or being not. in Thailand for four years. Gail was only away in Thailand for what three, four months, maybe, and she came back with a with a plait and mm-hmm. hippieish clothes. So I don't know what it would do to you after with four years. Because he doesn't have any children. Um, no, Jason doesn't. No. 
so maybe he'd be ready to settle down or maybe he'll come back with a um a family Maybe. 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 Maybe you'll come back with a more zen outlook on life like Peter well, Barlow. No, thank you. And they'll just both compete they'll to both see who can be each other's hair. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I think we're done. Yeah. I think we're done. That's Jason. Eight years apart as recordings. And I, and I hope we've, we've not seen the last of him. So thanks for listening, everybody. Ta-ra for now. Mm-hmm.